Hi, this is Tracy Kite with Georgia Highlands College, and today we're going to look at solving equations. The first thing we need to know is that there are three types of solutions. There's one real solution, there's no real solutions, and then there's infinitely many solutions. In our first example, we're solving for x. The first thing we need to do is to distribute 1 half to 6x minus 10. 1 half times 6x is 3x. 1 half times negative 10 is negative 5. We bring down plus 7 equals 7x minus 15 minus 3 x. The second step when solving equations is to combine like terms on the same side of the equal sign. On the left hand side of the equal sign, I see that I have two constants, negative 5 and positive 7. When we combine those, we are left with 3x plus 2 equals and on the right hand side of the equal sign, we have two variables, 7x and negative 3x. This leaves us with 4x minus 15. Once we clean up each side of the equal sign, we need to combine variables on opposite sides of the equal sign. To move 3x to the opposite side of the equal sign, so that I can combine it with 4x, I have to do the opposite operation. 3x is positive, so I subtract 3x. This eliminates it from the left hand side, leaving me with 2 is equal to 1x minus 15. Now I need to combine my two constants. My constants are 2 and negative 15. If I move the 2 to the opposite side, I would have nothing left on the left hand side. So I need to add 15 to both sides. This leaves us with 17 is equal to 1x. Our last step would be to divide by 1, but since 1 will not change the answer, we will be left with x is equal to 17. This means our equation has one real solution. Let's look at another example. On this one, we are asked to solve for y. It does not change the process. On this one, we see that we have a negative sign to distribute. This is the same as distributing a negative 1 to both terms in the parentheses. This would leave us with 2y minus 4y and then negative 1 times negative 7 would be positive 7 is equal to negative 1 half times 2y is negative 1y and negative 1 half times negative 14 is positive 7. We bring down our negative y. Just as we did in our previous equation, we're going to combine like terms on the same side first. So our two variables are 2y minus 4y, leaving us with negative 2y plus 7 is equal to, and on the right hand side, we have negative 1y and negative 1y, which gives us negative 2y plus 7. Again, I'm going to combine my variables. 
that are on opposite sides of the equal sign. So I do the opposite operation. I add 2y to both sides. And this time it eliminates my variable on both sides. And I'm left with 7 equals 7. So since there's nothing to solve, we are left with the question, does 7 equal 7? Since it does, this means that any number that I plug in for y would work as long as I plug it in for every single y variable. So we are left with infinitely many solutions. Now, I noticed that this would occur on the step right here. I'm left with negative 2y plus 7 equals negative 2y plus 7. This is the identity property, when something equals itself. That is always true. So we have infinitely many solutions. On our next option, or example, the first thing we need to do is distribute one third on the left hand side and three on the right hand side. One third times five x is five thirds x minus three plus five is equal to two thirds x plus 3 times 1 third is 1 x, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 4. Just as we did in the previous ones, the first thing we do is combine our like terms that are on the same side of the equal sign, negative 3 and positive 5. 5 thirds x plus 2 is equal to, and now we combine our like terms on the right hand side, 2 thirds x plus 1 x, and we also want to combine negative 3 plus 4. To get a common denominator of 3 so that we can add 1 to 2 thirds, we have 3 thirds. 3 thirds plus 2 thirds gives us 5 thirds x plus 1. Again, we're going to co now combine our variables on opposite sides of the equal sign. So I subtract 5 thirds x from both sides. When I do this, again, our variables are eliminated. And I'm left with 2 equals 1. Is that possible? Can 2 equal 1? No. So this means we have no solution or no real solution. There's no number we can plug in and add 2. Plug in the same number and add 1, and the two quantities be equal. So we've seen one solution, infinitely many solutions, and no solution. So since we've seen all three types, let's look at another example. On this one, just as on one of our previous ones, we need to distribute the negative into the parentheses. This gives me 5x plus 2 minus x minus 3 equals 12x minus 1. A common mistake is that people distribute the 2. The 2 is not touching the parentheses, only the negative sign. So that is what we distribute. 
Now we're going to go through and combine our like terms on the same side of the equal sign. So I have 5x minus x, which gives me 4x, positive 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, equals 12x minus 1. As before, now that it's cleaned up, I'm going to combine my variables that are on opposite sides of the equal sign. So I'm going to do the opposite operation. I'm going to subtract 4x. And I'm left with negative 1 is equal to 12x minus 1. I'm now going to combine my constants, negative 1 and negative 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And this gives me 0 is equal to 12x. 0 is a real number. It is absolutely fine to divide by 12 because we can divide a number into 0, we just cannot divide by 0. So as long as the 0 is not touching the variable, it is okay. Our answer for this one is 0 equals x. This is one real solution. Many students forget and think that this is no solution, but it is okay as long as the zero is a constant and not beside the variable. The things we need to remember, x equals a constant, even if it's zero, is one real solution. Two, when the variables cancel, but the constants are different, such as 2k plus 4 equals 2k minus 7, there's no real solution. And when the variables cancel, but the constants are the same, such as 2k plus 4 equals 2k plus 4, there's infinitely many solutions. Good luck on solving equations.